What would be your group's contribution to the new Center of Biosustainability? Well, we'll be responsible for designing bacteria as cell factories. So we are all microbiologists and we have good training in designing microbes into something which is useful. So, so that's the major purpose, that is to redesign the concept of the microbial organism into a production organism. Why did you decide to focus on cell factories in your research? Well, but bacteria are the most easy to manipulate. There's a long history of genetic manipulation going back to the origin of genetic engineering. And, and all that work was based on work in, in E. coli and other bacteria. So bacteria can be easily handed in the lab. They can be easily redesigned and they grow very easily in simple substrates. So, so there's a lot of very good reasons to use bacteria for industrial purposes. And, and also the industrial use of genetic engineering has showed very clearly that bacteria have many advantages. I'm a bacteriologist, so of course it's natural for me to work with bacteria. How long time would you think it would take before you would have a real breakthrough in your research? Well, I think in, in our particular section where I'm working, we will have lots of small breakthroughs. The real breakthrough uh, was the genetic engineering uh, in, in the late 70s or mid 70s. And I don't think we will have, you know, a gigantic revolutionary breakthrough. But I think we will have at the technology level and also at the bacterial design level, we will see breakthroughs very early on. We will change some of the methods, some of the tools. We will change technology. And, and I foresee that within the first three years, we will have a number of what you could call breakthroughs, which, have, which will make it easier to, to design the right strains. What impact do you expect the cell factories to have on the Danish society? I think they're necessary because we, we are going to change our industrial strategies and, and we need as many breakthroughs as possible. So even the small ones uh, will be very important. And, and there's a whole lot of technology which is not ready yet. And I think we can make uh, pretty good contributions to, to those technology breakthroughs. Like for instance? Like for instance, making organisms which can produce at a cost or with a profit, uh, which is um, interesting for industry. Right now, green industry is still suffering from econo uh, economic shortcuts. So we cannot compete so efficiently with oil-based uh, industry. But that won't take long, and as soon as it makes sense economically to use green methods, biotechnology, and so forth, uh, that will change everything. But we still need we still need to do these um, particular tricks to make it easy, fast, and efficient to to reach the goals. Which oil-based research do you think will most likely be replaced by biotechnology in the future? There will be many areas in the food industry, medical industry, plastic industry, uh, biofuels. Uh, we are not covering everything, but certainly in many, many areas where we use oil as, as some kind of resource, uh, green biotechnology will take over eventually. What is the biggest challenge if the world has to switch from fuel-based chemistry to bio-based chemistry? Well, of course, the biggest challenge is to make it work. Uh, and, and that's what we are confronted with right now. I think we may also sacrifice some of the products that we used to have from oil industry and simply decide that some of these products we don't need, they are not essential. So why make an effort to try to produce them? I think that's going to be a very interesting political discussion if, or, and also society discussion uh, if we can decide everybody that many of the things that we are using now without thinking about it may not be life essential, so we may have to give it up. Give me an example. Well, it could be having, you know, five different uh, types of plastic to wrap up our goods in the supermarket. Maybe one is enough, and, and therefore let's, let's discard the four other ones because we cannot make it anymore, or it would be a waste of effort and money to try to make them. So, so there, are, there are lots of things if you think about it. Uh, also, the, the way we, we make textiles, maybe we will have fewer materials to make textiles, but, but it could be okay. We can certainly survive without 
quite a few of them, I guess. So there will be things we cannot make, uh, and and the chemistry uh, sector, of course, will still operate, but maybe the costs, uh, both in terms of money and carbon dioxide emission and other uh, sort of side effects of the chemical industry, will not be tolerable in the future. So we will have to see what bio industry can provide. That that's very important. And then we should be happy with that, unless there's some very essential uh, materials that we cannot make. So it's going to be interesting. It's very hard to predict exactly uh, how this is, is coming about. But, but I could foresee some major decision making that, that we will have to do when the oil is gone.